That looks like a, that looks like a London bus. Welcome everyone to London, England, where the sun around the start of December sets and around midday it's dark as hell and everyone's sad and depressed. But you know what's not sad or depressing? Having a fun hobby like photography or time lapse or time lapse photography. The pals over at Licked asked me to make a video promoting the Christmas music on their website. So they're sponsoring this video, which is great because this means that I can buy more Christmas presents for myself. More about the sponsorship later. <laughs> Good day, mate. What? Tonight I am heading toward Oxford Street and Regent Street here in the west end of London and I'm going to be shooting some photos and some time lapses. I'm going to take you along with me. I'm going to try and get creative and give you some tips maybe so that possibly I can inspire you or you feel inspired to go out and shoot some Christmas lights yourself this year. I am joined by my good mate Pete Jobson who I haven't seen in a while and you're not seeing him right now either because of the depth <laughs> of field. I'm dreaming tonight of a place that I love even more than I usually do and although I know it's a long road back this I promise you just shot a nice shot here on this crossing. Safe to say it's a world famous crossing, Oxford Circus. First tip of the night, when you are shooting Christmas lights like this, you have to shoot raw files, not JPEGs, because these lights are much brighter than you think. Our eyes are really good at processing, sorry, this mask keeps sliding off. Our eyes are really good at processing what they look like, but the sensor is really bad at it. So we're gonna have to push and pull highlights and shadows in post quite a lot, and hence, you shoot raw photos and not JPEGs. I know for a lot of beginners, raw can seem scary, but it's not scary at all. I'll be home for Christmas. You can count on me. Please have snow and mistletoe and presents. Under the tree. So when shooting traffic or Christmas lights where things are moving quite rapidly, you want to shoot with a fast interval. The fastest interval I can shoot on this camera is one second. And then based on that interval, you're going to change your exposure time or your shutter speed to half the interval. This is based on the 180 degree rule of filmmaking, which creates the nicest motion blur. And as you can see, it looks very nice. These are some nice, pretty looking time lapses, right? If only in my Diversity is important in more ways than one. I always bring at least two lenses or at least a zoom lens that has a nice range from a wide angle to a tight shot with a long lens. A wide angle is great for establishing shots when you're arriving at the scene to show your audience where you are. And then tight shots are good for compressing your field of view to make a street look busier or a beach, for example, which we saw a lot during English summer here where they were exaggerating the amount of people on the beach. Christmas Eve will find me Christmas If only in my dreams Something I want to try is a manual focus pull time lapse where between each photo I adjust the focus manually just a little little bit I don't know what it's gonna look like but when you're shooting Christmas lights when they're blurry when there's bokeh when they're out of focus it increases the size of the lights which might look really cool Look, it's an experiment. Let's give it a go. First of all, this isn't a man like a, a mechanical focusing ring. It's kind of digital, I think. So I'm not even sure if this is going to work. Another thing I have to adjust is instead of a one second interval, we're going two second interval. So I get a little bit of time 
to do that in between shots. If it's one second, it's gonna be too hectic, I think. So let's give it a couple of frames where it's blurry and then we'll start. We'll start doing the little uh, focus, focus pull, I guess. So click, 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 turn. Click, turn. It messes up the rhythm, just noticed. Even though it's a manual focus. So it skips a beat when you do that. I'm gonna keep going, because it might still look cool. All right, so that was a fail, which is always fun. It's an experiment. I'm learning and you're learning as well. In time-lapse mode, when you pull the focus, it slows down the camera and then, uh, yeah, it just doesn't really work. So what I'm doing now is I've taken it off time-lapse mode. And just as with the super zoom video where I was zooming and clicking manually, we're gonna do that now. So I'm gonna take a photo and then I'm going to slightly change the focus, take another photo, and then we're gonna repeat that, I don't know, 50, 50 times. It's only for an example, so let's give it a go. Dark frame to know where I'm starting. Click. Click. Christmas Eve will find me Where the love light gleams almost like meditating it's like swimming you only focus on your strokes and your breath with this it's focusing on rhythm and the movement and I have to be very careful not to shake the camera oh we're there already that was very quick just firing off a couple extra shots now so I've got a little buffer at the end for maybe a transition or something anyways let's review that all right look it's not much but it's an experiment and on first impression probably not worth it but I'll pop it on the big screen and then you can decide <laughs> And then finally, there is one more experiment that I want to do that I have done in the past. It's when you have a zoom lens and you zoom in or you zoom out during a long exposure, which creates these light trails. And this should result in a really cool shot. And we're standing underneath this angel figure, whatever LED flying dolphin man. So perfect example or perfect spot to try this out. I've borrowed Pete's 16 to 35 lens. My settings are f8, 1.3 second exposure and ISO 100 to keep the tiles nice and clean. We've got this in the frame as you can probably tell. And I'm going to, with a shutter delay of 2 seconds, slowly zoom in, <laughs> very gently. So I don't shake the camera and this is what that looks like. And that's not a bad first try. Uh, you gotta keep playing with it, shoot some other frames as well so that you can superimpose them maybe to really bring out the uh, the angel and we'll just keep playing with it. Show me the magic. In this one I've zoomed out, does that make a different effect? Who knows? I think what's important here is that your subject is in the middle because that's what you're zooming into. Because I just changed the framing a bit to the top and then it obviously doesn't make sense. So once again an experiment and we're Figuring things out along the way. Let's try the same technique, but instead of zooming, we'll change the focus. Show me the magic. That's terrible, but that's fine. <laughs> so I've also brought my Serp Genie Mini 2, which is a little motion control panning or tilting device. Pretty much what it does is it spins the camera and you just keyframe it from like frame one. And then you set your end frame, something like that. Now you're supposed to do a move, shoot, move but I'm going continuous because I like the motion blur it creates and I know this will freak a lot of people out but I've almost always shot like that and no one's ever complained. What's 200 seconds in a minute? Three and a half. Recording time, 20 is one. All right, all set up, ready to go and I just hit start at the same time and this little panning device is moving very slowly now. It's almost not noticeable but we will still get motion in the time lapse and yes, I forgot to bring the right screw to mount it level and then put the ball head on top so we're going the other way around now so i'm going to have to correct the crooked shots in post a bit luckily we have a super wide angle thanks to pete so that's all good
those. Got a green green light effect, I don't know if you can see that. And then um, I went out to buy a Santa hat, but they're sold out everywhere. And I went, I wanted to get a Christmas tree, uh, but I couldn't find a big one, so I got a small one. So I'm just gonna hold this while I talk about today's sponsor. Licked. So I think we can all agree that a Christmas video is made a hundred times better with Christmas music or Christmas accessories even. However, the production music, the stock music that you get on these, you know, music databases has been, have been overused for, for a decade now almost. It's just been the same old uh, stock sounding ugly music. So how about this Vlogmas give the music selection on Licked a try. Licked is the world's first charts music licensing platform for creators and filmmakers like you and I. Which means you can license world famous Christmas music like I'll Be Home for Christmas, Jingle Bells, Oh Silent Night. Oh Holy Night. I just had to check. It's not Oh Silent Night, it's Oh Holy Night. We wish you a Merry Christmas, Deck the Halls, etc. and so much more without any copyright claim issues or ad revenue issues. You can get your first track for free and your second for half off and you can support the channel and me by clicking the link in the description below this video. Do it for me and for this little Christmas tree. Just made that rhyme up. Fantastic. This thing is surprisingly warm. I'm actually incredibly uncomfortable right now. Anyways, let's go over the post-production bit of all this time-lapse footage now, shall we? The first step is to offload everything from your SD card to your internal solid-state drive or an external solid-state drive. I never recommend working on old HDDs, hard to drive disks, hard disk drive? Actually, I don't know what that stands for, but you know, the old spinning platter ones. Then I create a Lightroom catalog and I import the contents of that folder into Lightroom using the add method. This keeps all the data in the place that you put it at. I then use this plugin to organize all of the time-lapse sequences. If you haven't made folders in your camera while you were shooting, this is an incredible time saver. I then edit the first and the last photo using basic sliders like white balance, exposure, contrast, and a little bit of highlights. I then paste that on the last photo and then I use that plugin again to pretty much synchronize the settings between the first and the last photo. The reason I'm doing it this way is because if you just copy and paste the settings, for some reason Lightroom's become incredibly slow at doing that lately. So using this plugin is a good workaround for that. Repeat that for every sequence, then select all the photos, hit Command S or Control S or right click and select Save Metadata. This saves the edits to the little external files and then we're going to import all that. We're just gonna drag it into After Effects. This will recognize the edits that we've done, create a bunch of compositions from these sequences, and then export them using the normal resolution that you shot it at, because why not? And I use the Apple ProRes 422 codec for export. That's pretty high quality and great for editing further afterwards. And then you can go and create a Christmas edit for Instagram or another platform maybe now that Instagram's been ruined by the shopping tab. Anyone, anyone? hate it. Anywho's, a big thank you to Licked for sponsoring this Christmas video, for sponsoring this cute little Christmas tree and these tinsels and sadly not the Santa hat. But yeah, check out Licked. You can support me and you can support this channel if you like what I make by clicking the video under this, oh, by clicking the link under this video. It's as simple as that. Thanks for tuning in and if you celebrate Christmas, a very Merry Christmas to you.